part three of abnormal psychology, disassociative disorders. So there's a few of them. Um, disassociative disorders are, well, first of all, disassociation is not super rare. Um, you've probably felt something like, I, w I didn't feel like myself, or maybe you were driving and you were thinking about other things and you ended up driving somewhere you didn't mean to drive to or walk somewhere you didn't mean to walk to. So disassociation is when you break from yourself, have a break from yourself. So uh, disassociation disorders are a break from you. All right, and again, with all disorders, these have to be prolonged, you have to meet a certain number of criteria, and also with all disorders or abnormalities, we all exhibit little bits and pieces of most of them throughout our lives and days. It's just when they become uh, longer and fit those criteria that we talked about in part one, that we can start uh, classifying them as a disorder. Okay, so a big disassociative disorder is disassociative identity disorder, which is also probably one of the most controversial. Uh, it used to be called multiple personality disorder, now it's called disassociative identity disorder. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in this one you exhibit two or more distinct personalities. All right. Personalities, and I don't remember what this movie was called. It had Jim Carrey in it when he was a nice cop, when he was a bad cop. Maybe you can help me off the name here. But um, that was he was supposed to have disassociative identity disorder, and it's really controversial because you can't, you often can't classify or um, confirm if somebody has this thing while they're alive. Um, whenever they do, do usually say, "Oh, this person used to have it; they're already dead." Because it's, you have to look at this long history of, of whatnot. There's been a lot of people who have, uh, not a lot, but there's been people who have tried to use this as a defense in criminal cases. And a lot of them have been convicted anyways. Um, but it's really hard because is there, how do you know and you know the different things. And so a lot of times there's some people who argue that there's no such, this isn't a real thing. There's nobody who has it. There's, there's some other symptoms can be described and be um, help you see that it's something else and it's not really disassociative identity disorder. So, but the thing you just need to remember is that if it when they're talking about it on the test, it's the two or more distinct personalities. Another um, disorder would be a disassociative amnesia, and this is where you have a complete loss of <clears throat> your identity identity all right so you completely forget who you are um, the difference between disassociative amnesia and disassociative fugue is that disassociative fugue is disassociative amnesia except this one you go somewhere you travel you go for a little vacay and in disassociative uh, fugue, you usually show up in like a new town or a new place and you say, hey, I'm John. I don't know. Who are you? Where are you from? I don't know. And so you show up. I mean, there's some really interesting, if you do a YouTube uh, search of disassociative fugue, some really interesting stuff on people who, you know, moved to a town an hour away, uh, had this, started a whole new life, maybe even got married to somebody else new. And then later on in their life, their old wife or husband found them. And they got reintited and they have no recollection. The guy has, or a girl has no recollection of his wife. And so it's this kind of really interesting situation that they're in. One uh, difference in, that you need to re remember is, uh, is this different than psychosis? Psychosis is a break from reality. And disassociation is a break from yourself. So psychosis, um, which is, one of the hallmarks of schizophrenia is a break from reality. So you hear voices that aren't really there. This associative is a break from yourself. So you are yourself, right? We've talked about what makes you, you. And if you break from that, then you've got a disassociative disorder. And like I said, a lot of times we experience parts of these things in our everyday life, but it's when it's long lasting and severe, etc., that we stop. Um, just saying it's a normal thing and start classifying as something more severe. So there you go, and we'll see you for part four.